Hello all. Today me and my partners will share with you all some information about theory of constraint. Definition. Theory of constraint is an approach to process improvement that focuses on constraint elements to improve output. It depends on the fact that, like the weakest link in a chain, often one element of a complex system is the most limiting ability to achieve an objective. It also focusing effort and investment on the problem factor can maximize the returns on an improvement initiative. Once the constraint process elements is remedied, the next weakest link can be addressed in an iterative approach. The five focusing steps of the theory of constraint show how to achieve ongoing improvement by addressing this constraint in a continuous fashion. First, identify the system constraint. You can't manage the constraint unless you identify it, and it is a surprising straightforward process to do so. Like a doctor assess symptoms and draw a conclusion that they come from a common source. A review of the undesirable symptoms that an organization suffers from can quickly lead to a diagnosis of the system constraint. Second part is decide how to best exploit the constraint. Since the output of the constraint is the limiting factor of the output of the whole system, our desire to exploit it translate to making sure that we are squeezing the most we can out of it. Utilization and productivity of the constraint must be maximized. Third, subordinate everything else to the above decision. The idea of subordinate suggests that our use of the constraint itself should not be allowed to be limited by anything else that outside of its control including policy habits and assumed requirements of non-constraint. A second aspect of subordination relates to the capability of the constraint itself. Just as it makes no sense to expect a chain to live more than its weakest link can handle, we should not expect the system to do more than the constraint can handle. To put more work then the constraint can deal with into the system result in assist working process, extend lead time and too many decisions relating to priorities that often evolve into no sense of priority. 4. Elevate the system constraint. Once you isolated the constraint and are managing the system based on it, it commonly found that there are more untapped capacity than previously thought. But sometimes, demand for more throughput leads to the need to uh, acquire more capacity. By finding alternatives to the constraint, or loading to other resources, or simply buying another machine, or hiring more people. Not that too often, system under pressure state the first three steps and jump to capacity acquisition, spending more money than might be necessary. Step 4 iteration should only be considered once we already exploit and subordinate it. 5. In a previous step, a constraint has been broken. Go back to step 1. Prevent initial from becoming the system constraint. When the weakest link has been strengthened to the point that it's not longer the weakest link, guess what? Yeah. There is a new weakness link. For example, you might rise production capacity to the point that the market is now the constraint. Or in a project, you may find a way to shorten the critical part of us to the point that it's no longer device how soon the project can get done. This constraint, whether it meets the market, a new critical part or whatever, demands a whole new view of the system. So we look back to step one, thereby putting the ongoing into the process of ongoing improvement. This part, if in a previous step, a constraint has been broken, go back to step one, prevent it nature from becoming the system constraint.
when the weakest link has been strengthened to the point that it's no, no longer the weakest link, guess what? Yup, there's a new weakest link. For example, you might raise production capacity to the point that the market is now the constraint. Or in a project, you may find a way to shorten the critical part of task to the point that it's no longer defined how soon the project can get done. This is a new constraint. Whether it be the market, a new critical part, or whatever, demand a whole new view of the system. So we look up, so we look back to step one, thereby putting the ongoing into the process of ongoing improvement. By using your organization current constraint as the initial target, you will be able to apply your effort in the most effective place, getting the most bang for the buck in the short terms and yet setting the state for a process of truly ongoing improvement. Now I will talk about the example. Step 1. Identify the system constraints. Look for the inventory accumulating before the constraints. The constraints is step C because it is the highest number accumulate of inventory. Solution The inventory buffer represents the waste or inefficiency of the constraints. The greater the inefficiency, the bigger the constraints is. Step 2 Exploit or maximize the efficiency of the system constraints. Example, the constraint step C can only produce 6 units per day. For, for the solution, keep the constraint utilization as close to 100% as possible in order to squeeze every available unit out of the constraints. Step 3. Subordinate everything else to the constraints. For example, inventory result from other process success. Step B produce more than the demand. For a solution, keep as little inventory as possible by balancing the other processes output to only what need to fill the constraints need. Step 4. Elevate the system constraints which means reduce unnecessary demand on the constraints. For example, the constraints is most expensive process in the system because it restricts throughput. For a solution, ensure the constraints is only producing product committed for sales to a customer and not for inventory. In fact, before the constraints to ensure only good input are used. Find alternative resources or processes to reduce demand on the constraints. Step 5. If within the previous step, a constraints have been broken, go back to step 1, but not allow inertia to cause a system constraints. For example, the system condition change when constraints are broken violating all rule or policy. For solution, review the system components again, including existing policy. Policy constraints typically have the greatest effect on limiting system performance. That's all our presentation. Thank you.